God wraps us in his glory according to the degree of light that's in our lives. And God is one in this church. I can't talk about no other church here today. I have to talk about this church. He's wanting to wrap. It was almost like a bubble. That was what was so strange. Just <sighs> white light, and then it was the church. He wants to glorify your life so that you can glorify his life. And as you glorify his life, you will become obedient to his word. And as you become obedient to his word, the works will come. But without his glory and without your obedience, it's not going to be much work done in the church. Sitting here, it's just fine. Singing, it's fine. Even preaching is just fine. But God's expectation is so much what? Higher than that. He's expecting the church to grow and to expand. He expects a tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit to be among us. He expects the brightness of his presence to be in the church. And, and I can see it even as I stand here speaking. The church was wrapped in the glory of God. And I thought, God. How powerful can that be? God, how mighty can that be? You want to glorify their lives more than they want their lives. Listen to me real close. He wants to glorify us more than we want our lives glorified. He will come on. He will come on. Say that. He wants to glorify me. He wants to put his what? Brightness on me. He wants to put his light in my life. That's why he could so earnestly say, ye are the lights of the world. You are a city that sit on a hill that, can, hill that cannot be here. He wants the glory of the Lord to come and to shine in here. And when that glory shines in here, people will come because of the glory. People will come because of the miracles and the signs and the wonders. You will be so excited about his presence on your life that you, the works will come. As long as you sit here without his glory, you can continue to sit here. But we got to have that anointing of the Lord to come on us, the power of the Lord to come on our lives. Changes, come on, say it. Changes have to take place in me. Changes have mm, Don't say changes have to take place in, in the church. Changes have to take place in me. Come on. Changes have to take place in me. I have to stop the procrastination. I have to get down to serious prayer. That's why I started out saying I realize even better now that it's a little bit more serious than I thought. We don't know what's coming up on us. Don't know what's coming up on the church. We need to be rooted and grounded in his presence and in his word. Changes, changes, got to start in us. The choice is yours. You can choose to be lukewarm, cold, hot. Come on. He described it. How did he describe it? Lukewarm, cold, hot. It's my choice to be hot. Lukewarm, he says. I'll spit you out. I'll vomit you out. I need you to be on fire for me. I need you to be hot with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I need the glory, the light, the light. Wherever there's light, there's heat. My God. My God. My if God. there is some light, it's heat. Yes. If the sun is shining, heat. If fire is burning, what? Heat. When I put plug my curlers in this morning, the little red light came on, heat. Come on, somebody. Yes. And the Lord is again wanting the church. The choice is yours. Mm -hmm. He's wanting the church to literally catch on fire, excitement, fire, telling somebody, oh, you need to come go to church with me. Most of us ain't telling nobody nothing. I'm about to close. I went to California in May, and I went to Bonnie Bray House. Bonnie Bray's house is where Seymour stayed. 
And he's the man that started the Azusa Street Revival. You all probably don't know all about that. You probably know, and you probably know. I'm there, and I'm reading the material that's there. I go to 6 o'clock, pray in the morning. And I, when I'm home, I pray an hour at night. That's two hours a day. I thought I was really doing something. And start to read this man's life. When he was up to praying five hours a day. Did you hear that? Get, we can't hardly get him to pray five minutes, but anyway. When he was up to <laughs> she's laughing, that's sad. Five hours a day, the Lord spoke to him and said, I need you to increase your prayer life. Now, mind you, he's praying. I left feeling shame. Five hours a day. The Lord said, I need you to increase your prayer life. Told him to increase his prayer life to seven hours a day. So he proceeded to pray seven hours a day. A revival broke out in the house. Yeah. <laughs> we want everything to come free and easy. It ain't going to happen. A revival broke it out at the house they were staying. Then it moved down the street to a, a, a horse stable. We had none of the modern technology that we have today. We didn't have the email. We didn't have the fax. We didn't have texting. Didn't hardly have telephones. But the Holy Spirit was so great in the revival. People came from all over the world. People would be walking down the street, and the Holy Ghost would slay them in the street. They'd get off a plane, and the Holy Ghost would stray them, slay them before they would get there. And I'm thinking, God, I'm like, I'm like those apostles. Increase my faith. I thought two hours was really hitting it. And here somebody's paying five hours more. But then a revival broke out. And people were saved. And out of that movement, the assembly of God came. The apostolic came. The church of God in Christ came. The four square movement came. Because one man dared to make a choice. You know, God, he dared to make a choice. <laughs> Listen, God could have told him he didn't have to do it because he told him. He always had a Oh, come on out of here. I'm trying to get you to see that if you want to be spiritual, you can. But there are some choices that what? Have to be made. Some choices that have to be made. Uh, we, we want it all to just fall on us. It, it's, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Every mighty move of God, I got to go to Azusa Street. I was in Tallahassee, Florida three years ago. And uh, a little lady walked up to me after church. She said, we don't have... We're not having the revival on Saturday night. She said, did you hear about that move of God that they are having? So I said, I heard about it. I said, it's been going on for a while. She said, oh, the one you're talking about closed out. Another one's been going on for about two years now. A revival for two years. When a revival moves for two years, it's no longer a revival. It's a what? A move of God. So she said, would you like to go? I said, oh, I would love to go. I wanted to go. She said, oh, it's about 20. We could drive about 20 minutes, and we'll be there. She said, we set up a time for her to pick me up. Saturday evening that time, she drove up, got in the car, drove about 20 minutes. We went to one place. It had outgrown this huge building. So I said, she said, oh, they moved it. So the guy that was standing there told her where they moved it to. We got in the car. Drove another 10 or 15 minutes out in the country. The biggest tent I've ever seen in my life. I saw Jack Cole's, Cole's tent. I saw Oral Roberts' tent. I saw A.A. A. Allen's tent. It won't compare. Out here in the field with grass and weeds all around was this 
humongous tent. We go in, spirit of the Lord is just moving. Glory of the Lord is moving all in the place. And then they began to put up on, on the screen where these people came from. People had come from all over the world to go out in a field because the Spirit of God was moving and the glory of God was there. This church has a choice. I talked to you at first. This church has a choice. I think it has already made the choice to live holy. I believe from the depths of my heart, you guys live holy. I think you did that. Has a choice to live righteous. I think you are in right standing with God. If I thought you were not in right standing with God, I would not have come here. But then there are some other choices. Other choices. The choice to live so that when I come, there's a tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place. Why? Because it's a tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit on my life. And if I come in with the tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit on my life, and you come in with the tangible anointing of the, Ho of the Holy Spirit on your life, because during the last six days, you found time to be in his presence. You find time to spend with him. And you come in in the tangible anointing on you. Tangible anointing is on you. Ten After a while, there's a what? Tangible anointing all over the church. And when visitors come, they will sense the presence of God. They will sense the glory of God. They will experience the anointing of God. And you know what will happen? They will want to come back because something beyond self is on display. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in here. Something beyond another program is on display. Something beyond routine is on display. Wow. It's getting quieter and quieter. Am I preaching to me? Something beyond the ordinary. We are supernatural beings. I am no regular person. I have the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in my life. So I'm just not an everyday Joe. There's something bigger than me happening with me. Y'all are quiet. The choice is yours. Come on, what? The choice is yours. Every, every place I ever taught school, they either fired me or they tried. <laughs> they fired me, the first place they fired me, because a, a, a revival broke out at school. And they didn't give the credit to the Holy Ghost. They said, that holiness woman is over there. And so the kids over there speaking in tongues in the, her classroom. Well, I'd gone to the cafeteria to work, and they just went in there because it was my classroom. But when they got in there, the Holy Ghost fell on them. <laughs> Listen, you can be mundane, typical, <laughs> ordinary. <laughs> I am no typical girl. I sit on an airplane beside somebody, we talk about Jesus. Sitting on the airplane beside a Jewish woman who flat told me I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I said, that's fine with me. You're going to face him one day. I just have fun. You don't have to believe in it. I said, but what's going to happen if the Bible is really real? She had to stop and think. If this is really real, then I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met up with the Muslims right down in Monroe, Louisiana. He was selling tamales or something on the corner. <laughs> and I got out to tell him about Jesus, and he thought he'd tell me about Muhammad. He didn't know I studied their history years ago. So I said to him, he said, I said, what about heaven and hell? Where are you going to spend eternity? I said, you know you're not going to live here always. Always casual, always happy. Not trying to condemn you, I'm trying to get you to think. So where are you going to spend eternity? Heaven is right here. 
So I said, son, <laughs> got deadly serious. Says, this is heaven, and you having to sell hot tamales to make a living. <laughs> I don't even know that I want to go to heaven. If this is heaven, what you're doing, no, this is not heaven. And, and I, I, I'm never antagonistic. I just tell him the truth and be grinning while I tell him. And uh, he left there knowing that uh, the Bible was written so many hundreds of years before they had a Bible. I'm standing out, I'm walking in, in Africa, I'm walking the beach because I don't like to go in that castle where they sold the slaves, so when everybody else goes in, I go walking on the beach to tell somebody about Jesus. Come on, say, the choice is mine. I could sit in the car, but then it's too hot to sit in. I'd rather go tell somebody about Jesus. And I, I'm, I'm, walking, I'm, I'm walking the beach, and I, I come up on a little house in a... I said to the man, I said, sir, uh, what is this? And he said, that's the house my God lives in. <laughs> it was about this one. I just finally, three years, I finally got to go in there and see what was in this house the God lives in. It was about that hot with him calling me so you know it was sure. So I said to him, I said, your God live in that little house? And he said, yeah, this is where my God lives. So I said, come here. Standing right out on the Atlantic Ocean. Far as the eyes can see, water. I said, you see that ocean out there? My God made that ocean. You see that sky up above my head? My God created that sky. I said, son, I have to stoop over if I'm going to go in your God's house. <laughs> no, 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 no. The choice is mine. The, the choice is mine to, to do the solid witness thing. Oh, I just want somebody to look in my life. So I never open my mouth about Jesus. Or the choice is mine to do what the scripture said. Ye shall receive power, Acts 1 and 8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You'll be a witness for me. He's literally saying, you're going to be my mouthpiece. You're going to tell everybody that you can about Jesus. I want my dad to the Lord. I want my sisters and brothers to the Lord. I want multitudes of people to Jesus. Because the choice is absolutely mine. The choice is mine to pray and keep the Holy Ghost stirred up on the inside of me so that when I begin to witness, they come under the convicting power of the Holy Ghost and not the charm that's in my personality because I have a vibrant personality by nature. That's me. I don't need them to be impressed with me. Be impressed with the Jesus that lives on the inside of me. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 16. Choice was mine. My coworkers got saved by the drove. The students would get saved by the drove. When I went to college, they was always said, oh, you the square, you the whatever. By the drove. Because the choice was mine. The choice was mine to live holy. Choice was mine to live righteous. The choice was mine to be a voice for the Lord. The Lord spoke to me some 15 or 20 years ago and said to me, I need you to be my voice piece. So if he need a voice piece, I don't mind being a voice piece from him. And let me tell you that the world needs your influence as a Christian as never before. It needs your example as never before. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. 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 Choice is yours. Hallelujah.